This is Mark DeLegge from beautiful Charleston, South Carolina. Today I will be presenting information about plant-based diets and their clinical impact. On a deeper dive, we'll be discussing protein, muscle metabolism, and protein quality through PDCAS. We'll be looking at P versus whey protein and muscle outcomes. Evaluating the data on plant-based diets and the impact on diabetes and cardiovascular disease. And finally, early clinical data with the use of an organic non-GMO plant-based enteral formulation. If we look at worldwide consumption of protein, there's more plant-based protein consumed than animal-based protein. Now, being from the U.S., and if you look at the Americas, it's flip-flop. But the reality is worldwide, plant-based protein is the more common protein source. When looking at chronic disease states and decline, there are nutritional factors that can impact it. We talk a lot about unintentional weight loss or progressive obesity impacting chronic diseases, and we've seen plenty of data regarding that. We'll be also discussing and evaluating muscle mass loss and function and the importance on chronic critical illness and where plant or animal-based proteins fit, blood sugar control, and also the impact of diet on cardiovascular disease. Let's start off with muscle. When we look at skeletal muscle mass, we look at synthesis versus breakdown or anabolism versus catabolism. Food intake, such as protein quantity and quality, can impact muscle anabolism, as can exercise. There's some thoughts that branched chain amino acids may be a better form of amino acids for muscle anabolism, although that still needs a lot of investigation. And catabolism is associated with chronic disease and not having exercise amongst other factors. The reality though is that very few studies have evaluated plant versus animal protein and its impact on muscle. And if we look at critical or chronic illness, there is hardly anything. And as I mentioned, we'll be looking at protein quality and its impact in the measurement that we use called PDCAS. Let's dive into PDCAS and protein quality. PDCAS is simply a method that we use to evaluate the quality of a protein you're eating versus a reference standard. And they compare the protein and its amino acid profile with the reference standard. And if it's similar, it gets a score of one. You can't go any higher than one. So for example, when you look at egg, it has a PDCAS score of one, chicken 0.92 to one, soy 0.9 to one, yellow pea 0.89. And I've given you some examples of both animal and plant protein. If we look at plant versus animal protein, such as pea protein versus whey protein and its supplementation and its impact on muscle, we really need to go to the male or female healthy volunteers. Here's a study of 161 male volunteers supplemented with pea or whey protein 50 grams a day over 12 weeks where they exercised three times a week. They didn't control the diet at home and then measured muscle size. And at day 84, they, when they looked at the biceps, there was a statistically significant increase in muscle size in either pea protein or whey protein supplemented uh, patients, but not in those on placebo. In a separate study in 15 subjects over eight weeks, exercising three times a week, they were supplemented with whey or pea protein, 48 grams a day, once again, their home diet was not controlled. When they looked at the rectus femoris muscle, 
there was a statistically significant increase in size of the rectus femoris in the pea protein supplemented group as compared to the whey protein supplemented group. How about blood glucose or diabetes? When we look at diseases like diabetes or cardiovascular disease, we generally have to look at very large surveys that have been done or observational studies. There aren't randomized controlled studies that evaluate outcomes over a prolonged period of time. So we look at things such as the nurse's health study too, or the health professional's follow-up study, where when you evaluate these particular surveys done over many, many years, it shows that substituting 5% of energy from plant protein for animal protein was associated with an 18% reduced risk for type 2 diabetes, or substituting one serving a day of plant protein for animal protein was associated with a 10% to 21% reduction in the risk for type 2 diabetes. When we look at prospective randomized trials in nutrients in 2015, there was a meta-analysis of randomized trials comparing plant to animal-based protein in patients with diabetes, the majority of them with type 2, looking at biomarkers such as hemoglobin A1c, fasting glucose, and fasting insulin. When you look at the meta-analysis and you look specifically at this slide, at those with type 2 diabetes, there was a significant improvement in fasting glucose for patients with type 2 diabetes that had at least 35% of their protein intake consisting of plant protein instead of animal protein. If you look at fasting insulin levels, again, in the group that had at least 35% of total protein intake per day consisting of plant protein, there was again a statistically significant improvement in fasting insulin levels. And finally, when you looked at pooled analysis of hemoglobin A1c, looking at the patients with type 2 diabetes consuming at least 35% of their total protein content with plant protein, there was a statistically significant improvement and hemoglobin A1c. How about cardiovascular disease in the protein source? Once again, for CV mortality, we're going to look at large databases. We're back to the Nurses Health Registry and Health Professionals Registry. 18 years of follow-up with food frequency questionnaires every four years. They had 95% successful follow-up. That's fantastic. Overall, there were about 36,000 deaths. 8,800 were secondary to CV disease. And what we saw was that increasing plant protein intake, there was a reduction in cardiovascular deaths. If you look on the right, as you go from protein category 1 to 5, which means more and more protein from plants, there was a reduction in overall CV mortality. And when they adjusted this for age or other comorbidities, it remained the same, meaning that the use of increasing amounts of plant protein were very, very important for the reduction in CV deaths. Lastly, when we look at the use of a plant-based enteral formulation in an outpatient practice, these are mainly pediatric and young adults with persistent weight loss, feeding disorders, or gastrointestinal intolerance. These were 10 patients with failure to thrive, feeding difficulties, or food allergy. It was retrospective. They were all on a commercialized enteral formulation and were switched to an organic, anti-allergenic, non-GMO, plant-based enteral formulation as an alternative and followed up for an average of 5.3 months. Eight of them had anthropometric data and then tolerance questionnaires were given to their caregivers. As you can see in the table, there was generally an improvement in weight for HZ scores for patients. And then when they queried the caregivers, the majority of them either strongly agreed or agreed that their 
child was tolerating the organic non-GMO plant-based enteral formulation better than the formulas they were on previously. So my conclusion is that plant-based protein is the most common protein consumed worldwide. Yellow pea protein has a PD cast similar to whey and casein. Pea protein is similar to other proteins such as whey for improving muscle size. In fact, in a small study, it was better than whey protein. These again were in healthy adults. Plant-based protein is superior to animal-based protein for glucose homeostasis. Plant-based protein is associated with a reduction in CV mortality as compared to animal-based protein. And an organic non-GMO plant-based enteral formalization resulted in an improvement in gastrointestinal tolerance and an improvement in Z-scores in a group of high-risk feeding disorder pediatric patients and also young adults. These are the references from this presentation. This is an acknowledgement that this offering was provided by Aspen and supported by an educational grant through Kate Farms. Thank you for attending.